essentially identified as bi. Um, not for any particular reason beyond the fact that my mom was bi, and we're, I was like, well, obviously I grew up to also be bi. Um, and even identifying as bi, not even as a lesbian at this point, I told somebody in high school that I was bi, and they immediately responded with, that's transphobic. Like, they started uh. to to me. <laughs> she was, she was tan. She was basically trying to explain to me that, like, you can't identify as bi anymore, you have to identify as pan or you're being transphobic. And I'd never, this was, when was this? This was 2015, and I'd like not been exposed to this stuff yet, so I was just completely, I was like, what am I doing wrong? Um, and then I switched to identifying as queer for a while, because like, okay, at least if I'm doing that, nobody's gonna get mad at me for it. And like, it felt wrong to identify as a lesbian once I realized that, because that's even more transphobic, especially in, like, the liberal circles I was in. I remember, because I also know that, like, I'm, we're around the same age, right? Yeah. So we both grew up, okay, so when I was in high school, um, I, like, I joined Tumblr maybe in, like, eighth grade, so, like, you know, that's when, like, all the Mogai stuff started coming in that's when you started seeing that that push of you can identify you know as gender fluid or you can be a demi boy or a demi girl and it kind of like it became its own little fandom around 2015 2016 era and like you know that was right after we got gay marriage so there you know tension shift and then, then you have all these kids on the internet making it into this, some kind of fandom remember when the discourse used to be like oh if you're trans mad you're horrible dis- you have to have dysphoria or you don't have to have dysphoria to be trans all of those different things and then I, I guess I think I kind of got a little bit lucky in that, like, I <laughs> I was in the gay club for, like, a year, and then I was like, oh, I don't like any of these people here, I'll leave. <laughs> so I kind of avoided some of the pressures. But I do remember just, like, a lot of people saying, I like the word queer, because I don't have to put a, you know, it's a really broad label. It's really great, because it's, you know, it can, it can do anything. It says nothing about me. And at the time, it was like, that's great. You know, it means you're different, but it says nothing about you. And then I grew up a little bit, and my dad found out that I was gay and all that stuff, and it's like, yeah, it's, it means nothing. It means literally nothing. How is that a good thing? Yeah, it's... Because there's the queer as a slur, which I know that for a lot of people it has been used against them, and so I would not apply queer to somebody else without their permission. But for me, it just doesn't mean anything at all. Like, I don't like it, but because it has no definition, and it lets spicy straight people feel special. Um, And I I, I did identify as queer as a teenager because part of it was, okay, part of it was couldn't say lesbian um, and, you know, not doing the labels thing and that's fun. And part of it was, oh, this will make, you know, homophobic people angry. Like, this is, to, to be homosexual is like strange and different from the norm. So like, let's reclaim it. Let's call ourselves queer. And then looking back, I was like, okay, that was just me being a teenager, because teenagers want to feel strange and different, um, or they do feel strange and different, and they want to celebrate it. And so now I'm like, no, me being homosexual is extremely healthy and normal. It's not the most common, like, it's less common in the population than being heterosexual, but it's still a normal variation. And it's healthy, and it's good, and I don't want it to be this, like, perversion or crime against nature they used to call it that like let's not go back to those times uh i'm actually i just finished a script today about why we should like why the kink pride discourse is so stupid and one of the main points that i make there is basically what you said like i don't like when people use queer as an umbrella term that means that anyone who feels weird or not normal can just opt in and be like yep i'm under this umbrella but like not all things that are normal are bad like wanting to protect children or <laughs> having like a family or something yeah that's normal doesn't mean it's bad because it's normal and just the broadness of the term just allows anybody to just opt on in and then you can't question them about it and then of course people want to pretend that it's not a slur because i guess they personally don't mind it and never had it yelled at them while being pushed into a toilet so therefore it doesn't count but to be honest i think queer is like one of those it's one of those things that points at how selfish some people <laughs> can be, especially in the community. Yeah, and also, I was learning about where these words originated from, 
And from what I saw, and if this sounds <laughs> we do some research and this turns out to be wrong, but homosexual as a term was first used by a gay man about another friend of his who was a gay man who committed suicide um, over discrimination. Uh, and so, like, it's coming from within the community, whereas queer was first used by a landowner in England, I believe, who referred to, quote, snob queers like Rosebery, end quote, um, about a man who was dating his son. Like, it was an insult. And this is also the man who got Oscar Wilde thrown in prison for being gay. Like, why, why is this the word we're picking? And then people try to argue that, like, oh, gay use is a slur, too. It's not. It's gay or homosexual or lesbian or all just words that are labels. And the part that is negative is the association. People who are, like, homophobic or have internalized homophobia don't want to be seen as gay or lesbian or just homosexual or whatever. And so that's why the word is negative to them. The word itself isn't a slur. Not in the same way that, like... Honestly, these conversations are so stupid to me because the minute you replace it with, like, the N-word, it's immediately obvious who's right and who's wrong. It's, it's, it's just, like, obvious. But no one wants to admit to that very obvious truth. Yeah. I mean, the origin of gay originally meant happy. And you'll see this in old poetry, like, skipping gaily through the meadow. Um, lesbian comes from, you know, Sappho of Lesbos. Um... And homosexual is just a very, you know, rather scientific. It's going back to the Latin, homo, same, sexual, so it's same sex. None of these have, like, an inherent meaning that's demeaning, I guess. Even if they're used as insults, like, obviously you can take almost any word <laughs> to turn it into an insult. But there is a difference between what, like, the origin is and what the word originally means. And also, like how like how it's currently used as well that's something that always annoyed me with like reclaiming slurs because like yes people can still use gay or lesbian or you know lesbo or whatever in like an insulting way but it's become less common to see it as by itself inherently as an insult versus like people still use queer 100 percent as the way it was intended back when it was first used in the same way that people use the n-word in the exact same way that they intended when it was first made like if nothing's changed and all of a sudden you specifically just you by yourself decides oh i'm going to reclaim it do you have the authority to do that what's the difference between somebody saying i was called this word and i'm going to use it to, to describe myself because you know like f those people i don't know from where um he said this to me and the way it is now where straight people where schools, like, straight people will refer to, you know, the queer community, and schools will have queer studies, and there's a difference between calling yourself a word and, and between making it the accepted term for everyone to refer to a broad community. This whole topic of, you know, women's rights and how it intersects with trans rights, um, is just a thing you can't talk about now. I mean, I will say, I have been bringing it up with various friends of mine, subtly, um, and some of them are, like, completely aware of my beliefs, even if they disagree on them. And other friends, I'm like, I will lose this friend if I say the wrong thing. And it is concerning. Yeah, I... That's one thing that I really do like about, like, on one hand, it can still feel pretty isolating to have all everyone who, would, like, at least is willing to hear you out be online and Discord servers on Tumblr or whatever. Because I think, whew, I have the horrible memory, but I'm pretty sure, like, I peaked and then almost immediately joined, you know, our server and met people. And then I was, you know, I didn't have to have, like, this, oh my god, am I going crazy? Am I the only one who sees the truth thing? And then my friends, I, <laughs> I've always had really small friend groups and... I think that worked to my advantage in that the people who are in my life know me and trust me enough to hear me out because if you try to bring like this up to just random people or associates they don't want to they're so they, they've they're so brainwashed honestly that any questioning of the you know holy book makes them just immediately shut down oh no you're bad and then they don't want to listen anymore yeah i i also joined the server 
pretty immediately after peeking. I mean, I've been, like, very slowly, like, dipping my toes in and being like, okay, I'm still, like, four trans rights, but, but like, let's keep sports separated by sex, and, you know, I was, and then as soon as I saw, basically, you know, the listen, listen to trans women, and I actually started reading what trans women were saying on Tumblr and on, on Twitter and becoming horrified, right after that, I did find the server, so... That was very nice. Also, my mom was actually more, like, peaked before I did. Um, and so I can talk to her about this. And then one of my closest friends, actually her brother is her female, identifying as um, a guy, um, sibling, is trans, and yet she's the friend who's, like, heard me out the most on all this, and agrees with, frankly, a lot of it. It's very interesting to see her kind of get, you know, torn between these two sides. And I do think it's really important to talk about it, too. Like, I know that I feel like a conspiracy theorist sometimes when, like, discussing this stuff, but, like, I've had a lot of experience having a lot of interactions with more conservative leaning people so i i think i know like what topics to bring up and how to approach them with pretty much any audience but it's always such it's like a battle plan you gotta like figure out okay this person used to play sports so they're more likely to be able to hear the science about why we shouldn't have um trans women in sports why we should continue to have sex separated sports because they did it and they understand how it works versus this person is super into makeup and femininity and maybe approaching it from sports is not the best idea maybe i should approach it from um women in jail or something since she's had more experience with that like it feels like you're, you're planning for a battle <laughs> and then half the time you don't even you just you just get shut down with one of those phrases trans women are women all genders are great a woman is whatever it feels like, you know? You end up just getting shut down with one of those phrases, and it's like, okay, <laughs> we're getting nowhere today, huh? That, and also when you'll share statistics, and they just refuse to believe you, they're like, that can't be true. And it's like, but it is. Like, okay, in the UK, in prisons, women, I believe it's 3% of women who are in prison are convicted of sexual crimes, for men it's 18%, for trans identified males it's almost 60% and you tell people this and they're like, that can't be right, and it's like well, sorry the main ones I'm memorizing are like, when people pull out the 2% of the population is intersex and it's like, no 1.7% of the population is the number you're thinking of but even that's wrong because 1.5 percent of that is people just with hormonal variations like they're still clearly male or female they just have like high testosterone or whatever and then 0.2 percent of that most of that is chromosomal defects of which they are sex specific disorders like uh turner syndrome or trisomy um x are female specific intersex disorders whereas Kleinfelder syndrome is male specific the remaining 0.018% is people who have an ambiguous phenotype or a genotype that doesn't match their phenotype. That's who you're talking about, which is less than one in every 5,000 people. That is an extremely rare birth defect. But they're like, no, it's 2%. It's not 2%. Remember the asexual argument? Like, oh, queer is fine. Like, if your asexuals are able to be at pride, you can't judge people. Even if it's a man and a woman holding hands, they could be, they could be bisexual non-binary NBs. <laughs> Oh yeah, the whole don't judge, like don't look at a obviously opposite sex couple at Pride and like make assumptions because you're being a bigot. Um, although honestly, I haven't been to a Pride event since what, like 2019, and even that was very lame. And everybody was chanting the trans women are women the entire time. I went to Pride only once because it was like the year before COVID and then it's been shut down the past two years. And I think it'll be open this year, but it's like if I go, I'm going to have to wear like a vegetarian t-shirt, something that's like faintly turfy. <laughs> but honestly, I, I'm i fine with skipping June. We don't have to have June. We can just like, we can just go from May to July. I don't need to see the things in stores. I don't need to see the same three arguments. Like, 
I don't know. It feels like it's just one of those things where you're just talking in circles because it's the same thing every year, except every year we lose a little bit of ground. And so now the overwhelming opinion is like kink should be allowed at Pride because gay men have kink in their culture. When like five years ago, it was more like, eh, I could see why some people have kink at Pride, but maybe we shouldn't do it. Like we had this big, we had this shift. We've lost that war. <laughs> Wait, they don't even say that anymore because who cares about cis, cis gay men these days? It's just, it's the, that being queer is inherently abnormal and strange, and therefore it's, and therefore since kink is also abnormal and strange, it should be at pride. Like, that's the new argument. They don't phrase it like that, but that's what they're saying. I saw a tweet that was basically saying, it was a gay man, who was saying, there should be no reason to feel pride at a thing that there should be no reason to feel shame for either. Um, and I know that I know that obviously people do feel ashamed of being same-sex attracted, um, and I, I'm totally in support of them finding their pride in it. But for me, like I said before, it's not the most common variation, but it's a totally normal variation within humans. And so it does feel odd to feel proud of it. Like that's feeling proud of like having freckles or wearing glasses. Like it, it's, it does feel odd. If you look at the animal kingdom, there's gays. There's, there's a lesbian pride like um, lions or whatever, there's lesbian tigers, there's gay monkeys, whatever. You can find homosexuality in every single... Basically any animal that forms, like, bonds with a specific partner and also functions somewhat in a larger community. By which I mean, like, penguins, for example, the same-sex couples will adopt orphaned um, chicks from within their larger community, and it's actually evolutionary advantageous to have these like extra adults around who can step in like there's a gen there's like a genetic benefit to having homosexuals in a community specifically because of the ability to take care of extra kids that are unwanted etc cetera, etc cetera. and because we're the only king it's because we're the only like animal that has the weird gender roles that we end up having the gender confusion and dysphoria and all those extra issues I really don't think that we should be lumping together everything under one umbrella anyway, because what do we have? Like, we can have common ground with, like, gays and bisexuals. So, like, there is some commonality there. We all are same-sex attracted. Even if things vary, we have that one thing. What do we have in common of people who have gender issues? Yeah, I don't like that it's LGBT. Never mind the LGBTQIA. 2S plus, I, I don't know what it's about these days. Because if you are a homosexual or bisexual person identifying as trans, you're included within the LGB group. But if you're a trans person who is heterosexual, you shouldn't be lumped in. Like, that doesn't... You're right, like, people who are same-sex attracted should have their own community for that. And the gender thing is just a separate separate issue because i think a big part of it is the dilution of like communities like that you can see this in the in the lgbt community we got we got gay marriage and then suddenly every other issue we had is just gone bisexuals you have like the higher rate of like being um being assaulted or having depression or whatever we don't talk about that we don't talk about lesbians and the fetishization we face by the broader just community don't talk about that gay men don't get to talk about the sexual issues in their community either it's just we disappeared all those issues tucked away because the big issue here is the the t and so like we had things that we still needed to fight for there's plenty of battles we still need to fight but we don't talk about them because only a certain part of us like only the lgb has those problems and we're not allowed to mention that not when there are so many trans youth so many trans kids who are just going to kill themselves if we don't get the medication and you see a similar issue with like the rad femme community where some people just aren't radical feminists. They just like to hate on people or they're confused. And so how do you get anywhere when you don't even know what you stand for? Because the, like, the general label has gotten so broad and so indecipherable that it means nothing.